All right, Mr. Slater, we're recording this on Saturday, April 6th. The offseason workout program starts on Monday for the Patriots. If you were still playing, how different would this Saturday be than the one you're enjoying today? And let people know what you are enjoying today. Well, I don't know. I I, I would love having a Saturday like this uh, at any point in time, playing or not. It's it's uh, a, an honor and a pleasure to be here at Legoland New York and partnering with them with their Pros of Play initiative. And just, you know, to come out here and have fun with my family. I think that's the one thing that I've really been um, focused on in, in retirement is spending more time with my family, playing with the kids, having fun, and certainly to be here at Legoland New York and to be uh, getting ready to have a great day with my kids and my wife is something that we're really excited about. I know you're officially retired. You hung them up for good about a month or so ago. Have you had a chance? I'm curious, have you had a chance to clean out your locker? And if so, what was that process like for you? Yeah, I have had a chance to clean out my locker. Um, I went in there probably the week after the season and I took everything out and, you know, it was, it was a bit strange. Uh, to spend 16 years in one place, um, you accumulate a lot of things. I had a lot of junk in that locker. <laughs> so to be able to clean it out, I took two of my sons in there with me. Um, it was bittersweet. You know, certainly very thankful for the journey that I had. And, you know, all good things must come to an end. And I'm looking forward to the next chapter. You've been pretty active the last few weeks. I saw you on with Chris Long as well as our old buddy Julian Edelman. You also appeared on The Dynasty. I know that was filmed a while ago. Now that it is aired, I'm curious to get your take on how you were portrayed. I know some of your old teammates, mm -hmm. including Devin McCourty, said he felt he used the word betrayed a little bit. Rodney Harrison express, expressed some dissatisfaction as to how he was portrayed as well. What was your experience like? Yeah. Uh, you know, I would echo their sentiment. Um, <clears throat> you know, I, I understand that when... People set out to um, create these projects. The, the directors and writers, they have to do things that are going to engage an audience. Um, it's unfortunate, though, uh, that they chose to do it in the way that they did. I felt like it was uh, very slanted, and um, I didn't I didn't like the way that Bill was portrayed. Um, I didn't like the way that I came across, because certainly I feel very fondly uh, in terms of my relationship with Bill and my experience with him. And I, but I tell people this, you know, if you have an, a relationship with someone, um, for the most part, the good ones, 98, 99% of them, you have nothing but positive things to say. And, you know, there are going to be one or, one or 2% where uh, maybe you didn't see things out of all, all, all the time. And maybe there were some things that you would have done differently. And I felt I felt like they focused on that one to 2%. And that was disappointing. And, you know, in hindsight, I probably would not have participated in the project if I knew that it was going to come out the way that it did. Have you gotten any blowback from people who are Patriots fans or, you know, teammates or whatever the mm -hmm. case may be? Yeah. You know, I think our fans, a lot of the fans that I've talked to are, are pretty disappointed in um, the project. They're, they're disappointed in the way Bill was portrayed. And, you know, I feel the same way. So, um, you yeah, know, it's unfortunate. Um, you know, I, I, I think when I think of the dynasty, uh, I think of all the fun that we had, all the great things that we were able to accomplish together. And I, I want to remember the good things about it, um, uh, the blessings and the great experiences and relationships. And I, and I will continue to focus on those positives moving forward. I'm going to change gears here a little bit. I was at the Combine, and I asked one of your old friends, Kevin O'Connell, about Gerard Mayo and what sort of coach he thinks Gerard's going to be. He... Now, unprovoked, mind you, said, I think we can start the head coach watch for Matthew Slater as well. I know the 2008 draft class, you guys were pretty tight. And I know that we talked in the past about your potential, you know, maybe one day down the road about you being a coach. Uh, I, I know your focus is on your family right now, and, and that's where your, your, your mind is at. But it's always nice to hear something like that from a guy that you played with. Does that get you thinking at all anymore? Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, look, I, I love the game of football. I love uh, everything that it entails. And, you know, as I transition into this next phase of my life, um, certainly I'd love to be involved uh, however I can in, in a way that makes sense for my family and I. Uh, but I think about, you know, culture building, pouring into young men and sharing the experience that I had as a player with the next generation. Now, you know, that may not be as a coach, 
I'm not aspiring to be a head coach like those two guys, but maybe that's as a member of a staff or in some type of supported role. So I'm very much open to that. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll just see what the future holds. You told me that uh, you, you thought James Ferentz would make a great coach. And lo and behold, he becomes an assistant offensive line coach with the New York Giants. Uh, it, it really seems to be that room. It, it, it's it, You guys seem to turn out coaches on a fairly regular basis. What is it about the Patriots that seems to be, seems to lend itself, seems to manifest ultimately mm -hmm. in, in staying in the game and wanting to stay in the game and in becoming a coach, scout, whatever the case yeah. may be? Well, look, I think you have to give a lot of, uh, of credit to Coach Belichick. He created an environment where uh, players with high football IQs were valued. Uh, he, he found those players. He identified them. He put them on his team, and he developed them. And he continued to pour into them in terms of football knowledge, just general football knowledge and readiness. And, you know, I think what you have is a, an environment of guys who are ultra competitive, who love the game, who love the process. And when they leave the game in terms of playing, they want something, they want to do something with all that that they've acquired. And for many of them, they've turned to coaching. And that's that's really no surprise. So I could have told you James was going to coach. I, I did tell you James was mm -hmm. going to coach. And I'm very happy for him and excited to see where um, a lot of us go um, for those of us who have crossed over into retirement. Two last questions for me. One, I want to get your take on what you think of the new special teams rules. It feels like they're going to free things up for returners. I don't think it was a coincidence that Cordell Patterson was signed immediately after, you know, they, they they passed the new rules. But when it comes to your old position, working as a gunner, it might change things up a little bit. Yeah. Well, look, uh, here's what, I, what I'll say is the, the two things that are most important as I look at the play are uh, player safety and health, which is always going to be paramount. And then preserving the play. I think, you know, we had reached a point where uh, the kickoff was in jeopardy. And, you know, that would be very, very tragic to lose that play. So I, th I think they've found a middle ground where they feel comfortable. We'll see how it goes this year. I wouldn't call it kickoff anymore. I, I, you know, I, it doesn't feel like kickoff to me, but it's going to make for an interesting play. Uh, I think it's going to create some excitement. And then I think it's going to make uh, guys like Brendan Schooler uh, even more valuable, right? You, you got to cover a lot more now. So the coverage will be different. The schemes will be different. The techniques will be different. And I'm, I'm excited just like everyone else to see how it's going to turn out. Last question for me. And again, I really appreciate you taking the time to do this today. If you're in the corner office uh, a couple of Thursdays from now and you're sitting on that number three pick, if you're Elliot Wolf, if you're Gerard Mayo, <laughs> where are you going? What are you doing? I, I won't ask you to pick a quarterback, but but Man. maybe like like do you go do you go quarterback? You go wide receiver? You go off? Where where are you going if, with that number three pick? That is a that is a great question, and um, <laughs> you know I, there's a reason I'm not in that office, <laughs> but uh, you know I, I I think it's it's a very important draft overall, right, for the team, and uh, I'm excited to see what they do, um, how they navigate it. There are a lot of great players. Obviously, uh, it's easy to say that uh, quarterback is a position that uh, the team may be looking at. So there are a lot of good ones, um, and and maybe they'll end up with one. So, but I don't have a crystal ball. I don't. I don't want to get into those predictions. Um, you know, Gerard has my full support, and we'll see how it goes. And it's good to see an old friend in Jacoby Brissett come back, regardless of, of whatever Absolutely. happens. And his mentorship and leadership for that room will be very, very critical. And, uh, you know, they got the right job, the right guy for the job. Matthew Slater, thank you so much. It's great to see you again. And hopefully we can catch up again sometime in the, the not-too-distant future. Sounds great. Thanks, Chris. Great to see you. Great to see you too. Take care.